today's video, I'll show you how to use the new ChatGPT image tool to create full animated scenes. Hi everyone. I'm super excited to share something new with you. It's an easy way to tell stories using images made by ChatGPT. Now you can make fun animated stories without spending a lot of money or using hard to learn tools. Thanks to ChatGPT, it's now much easier to create characters and animations. No more struggling to make things look the same or trying to come up with ideas from scratch. Stick with me, because I'll also share my special prompts and even how to set up everything, totally free. This will save you time and take the pressure off. Here's what we'll cover today, step by step. How I write my script, how I generate images, how I animate the images, how I make the characters lip sync, how I create a voiceover, and finally, how I put it all together into a complete animated video. Sounds fun, right? Let's get started. First, go to chatgpt.com. Then look on the left side and click Explore GPT. Next in the search box, type Animation Script Builder. You'll see it show up, it's this one right here. Click on it, then just click Start Chat. Now in the chat, you can explain what kind of project you're working on. If you already have a script, you can paste the whole thing there, or just describe your idea in detail. For me, I'm just going to write a short description. Write a 3D cartoon animation script about a mom and her son, Liam. The mom tells Liam not to eat breakfast until he brushes his teeth. I'm just doing a quick test, so my idea is very simple and not very detailed. As you can see, it asks me some questions to better understand what I want. For example, how many characters should be in the script? What does the boy look like? Are there any other characters, and what do they look like? What animation style do I want? I chose 3D. In this case, I'm going to say there. Should be two characters, Liam and his mom, go ahead and come up with the rest details. As you can see, it started by creating the characters. It gave a description for the boy and another description for the mom. That's the first step. Next, I'm going to say, write the script for scene one. As you can see, it has broken down scene one into shots. For each shot, it includes a bit of narration, a description of the shot, a text to image prompt, an image to video prompt. This helps me copy the image prompt and use it in any image generator, and do the same with the video prompt in any video generation tool. Everything you need from scene ideas and visual cues to animation prompts is all organized in one place. You don't have to spend time figuring out shot lists, writing visual descriptions, or formatting prompts for other AI tools. It's all done for you, and that's what makes this GPT so helpful. It doesn't just help you write stories, it simplifies the whole animation process, making it faster, easier, and much more beginner-friendly. Now it's time to keep things moving. The next step is image generation, which is where we create the images we need. I copy the first prompt and paste it into the search bar. Take a look at this. This is the first image it generated. Once that's done, I'm going to create the image for shot two, and here's what it looks like. Then I'll continue the process creating images for shot three, shot four, shot five, and so on, for all the shots in the script. Sometimes the character design might start to lose consistency. If that happens, there's a simple fix. Just re-upload the character's image and copy the prompt for the shot. Add your character's image as a reference so the system clearly remembers what they look like. You can keep doing this whenever the character's appearance starts to change. Re-uploading the image will help maintain a consistent look across all scenes. So I've opened a Kling AI and I'm going to click on the upload image option. Now I need to add a prompt for Kling AI. Luckily, GPT already gave me everything I need. For shot one, there's already a video prompt written out. I'll just copy that, go back to Kling AI and paste it in. And then I'm going to click on generate. I've gone ahead and done the same steps for each scene. Here are just a few examples. Now we need to handle the lip syncing for the scenes that include dialogue. I can still do that using Kling AI. 
It's not perfect most of the time, but I'll show you how it works. So I have this shot here that I generated of Liam Mom, kind of telling him something. On the shot that Kling AI generated, you'll see there's a lip sync option right there. I'm going to click on it. You'll see two options, text-to-speech and upload local dubbing. Select text-to-speech if you want Kling AI to generate a voice from type text. Select upload local dubbing to upload your own recorded voiceover or dialogue file. I copied the dialogue from the shot and pasted it. For the voice type, I selected female. Under emotion, I chose angry to match the tone of the dialogue. Once you finish setting everything up, click generate. No breakfast until those teeth are sparkly. As you can see, this is the result. The mother is still talking even though the dialogue has ended. So let's try another website like Pixverse AI. Pixverse is really good at animating stylized images and it also handles lip sync very well. They give you 60 credits each day. Once you're on the website, look at the bottom part of the screen. You'll see an icon that lets you upload an image. Click on that icon. Next, find the folder on your computer where your images are saved and choose one. I'll pick this one for now. After you upload the image, you'll see a box where you can type a short description of the scene. Or simply go back to GPT, there's already a video prompt written out. I'll just copy that, return to Pixverse AI and paste it in. Then click Create. After a short while, the video will be ready. Now I move on to the Speech option. Click on the Speech tab. You'll see the generated video appear on the screen. Next to the video, there is an option to upload your voiceover. Below that, there is a text box where you can type the dialogue you want. For now, I choose to copy the dialogue for the shot. On the right side, you'll find the voice options where you can choose and enable a voice for your character. No breakfast until those teeth are sparkly. The result is very good with no problems in lip sync. Look at another example. Oh man, even the sparkly part? You can compare the results between the two websites and choose the better one. Now we will need the voiceover for narration as well as the dialogue in the shots. Let me show you how I can do this. To generate our voiceover is honestly very simple. I've talked about this on my channel. Eleven Labs is my favorite. I still think it's one of the best. I have Eleven Labs open right now, and I'm going to paste my narration there. Now I'm going to stop here so we can move on to the final stage. The last thing we need to do is head over to our video editing tool, so we can edit everything together and give it that polished cinematic feel. For this, I'll be using the CapCut app, which is one of the best free editing tools available. It's both beginner-friendly and powerful. All right, I already have all my files uploaded into CapCut, and now it's time to put everything together. The first thing I'm going to do is drag the voiceover of the story narration onto the timeline. The next step is to arrange the video clips according to the voiceover. I'll place each clip in the correct order, making sure they align perfectly with the narration for smooth and seamless storytelling. Once that's done, we can move on. Next, I'll move on to adding transitions between the video clips. To do that, simply go to the Transition option located at the top corner of the CapCut interface. Apply to All, so the transition effect is added to all the clips at once. The next step is to add captions to your voiceover, which can significantly boost both engagement and accessibility. Go to the Text section, then tap on Auto Captions. Next, click Generate and CapCut will automatically transcribe the voiceover and sync the captions with your video. To change the font, color, or animation style of the captions, go to the top right corner and click on Templates. You can browse through different designs and choose the one that best fits your video style. The final part is to add the background music, tap on Audio. You can select from CapCut's music library by tapping on Sounds. I typed kids in the search bar to find child-friendly music. Browse through the available tracks, tap to preview them, and then tap the plus icon to add the music to your timeline. 
You can also trim the track and adjust the volume as needed. Once everything is in place and you're happy with the edit, the final step is to export your video. Just click on the export button. If you enjoyed this video, kindly do me a favor by giving it a thumbs up so YouTube can recommend it to others. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please make sure to subscribe. I'll keep creating videos that show up on your timeline. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Keep learning and bye for now.